Alrighty, guys. <clears throat> Welcome back to another episode, episode 279 of the Michael Lab Show. Um, I'm sorry I missed last week. I did a family trip. Taylor and I went back home for the weekend, spent it with my family, spent it with her family, did Halloween, um, came back on Monday morning, uh, Tuesday morning, actually, and I was planning to do a podcast on Tuesday. And then uploaded on Wednesday, but I did not. I apologize for that. I was exhausted, I was tired, um, and I just had a lot going on. So yeah, didn't upload. Uh, but I did upload a uh, the Road Back series. Episode two is live now, um, and then on Friday there's going to be episode three of the Road Back, where I do a full day of eating for my video of the day. Um, in addition to that. I'm just trying to catch up with everything. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast, to the channel, if you guys want to go ahead and like the, uh, the, this, this podcast episode real quick, and then go back and watch episode two of the road back and like that, that helps me out a lot with growth and getting the brand and the name and the podcast out there. Go ahead and subscribe and like on Apple, uh, podcasts and Spotify as well. Um, but yeah, guys, today's November 8th and, Today's November 9th. Yesterday was election day. And it's been a interesting year. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts lately. I listened to I you know, I kind of the last episode I did was about the Kanye West situation and that that is a situation. I've been getting a lot of pushback in terms of like social media pushback, which I don't really give too much credit to. I think it's, you know, I don't you have to, right? Because they're people and people are all equal. And even if their opinions are something that I strongly disagree with at the end of the day, they're still opinions and they're people and you have to listen to them. Uh, but I, I basically took this stance when all the Kanye West, uh, fallout was happening, uh, by saying that what he said was dangerous and what he said can lead to isolation and a, grouping of individuals and in this case Jewish individuals people of the Jewish faith and that was my stance and I thought it was a pretty um pretty understood and pretty reasonable and probably and um I want to say popular but after I I put out a few clips and I put out the podcast it doesn't seem as popular as I thought the whole issue with the Kanye West thing was not that he was blaming media that he was blaming lawyers and agents for maybe the downfall or the control that he has in the media that he has for his 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 freedom to say what he wants. But the the issue that I had with Kanye and I still have with Kanye and something that is I've I've been grappling with a few things uh, this past week. Um, I've been grappling with the Kanye situation, and I've also been grappling about um, the podcast that Joe Rogan did with uh, Matt Walsh which was a good podcast until like the last hour. Um, but with the Kanye thing, it was basically, do you have moments of history that will repeat itself? And they do repeat themselves. And they never start off with a bomb, right? They always start off with like a little spark. And, you know, maybe I'm ignorant, maybe I'm uneducated, and maybe I'm, you know, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. But if you want to create a movement against something, you have to take that that group of people and make them seem like they're less than. And the easiest way to do that is to classify them as a group of individuals instead of as people. And that was my issue with Kanye, is that he said phrases like the Jews. And the issue with the phrase the Jews is, first, there's two issues. One, you're not man enough to say who the real person at fault is and that is what Lex Friedman said to him in the podcast he did with Lex um, and then two it shows you have a anti-semitism belief towards Jewish people and the idea that the reason why Hollywood is run the way it is and the reason why the banking system is run the way it is and the reason why anything lawyers anybody accountants they have power more power than you do is because of Jewish, that Jewish people are here to take over the world. 
and to make everybody else like their servants is absurd. It's not true. It's false. It's a, it's a cop out. It's a cop out. And that, that was my issue. That was my issue with Kanye is that he did it. And does he believe what he says? I hope not, but does he most likely? Um, and my biggest issue is not with him. It's about the people that listen to him. I mean, I know people that are not the brightest people. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, there's a group of Americans out there right now who for the last four years, for the last two years have been under a spell. And the spell that they have been under is the election was stolen, that Trump was the solution to the issues in the world, that um, Hillary Clinton is an extremely evil person, that um, the left is out there to just destroy humanity and destroy men. And they're looking for anything to grapple onto. And when Kanye comes along and he gives... Um, he gives people a reason to be like, look what he's saying, and they agree with that person. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. And I don't care if you're left or right. Whenever you classify a group of people, the Jews, the blacks, the Mexicans, you're creating a dangerous situation because there's people out there that the whole hatred they have in the world is towards a group of people. And if you give somebody the okay, if you give a group of people the okay to hate another group of people and they feel like they can just do it with no repercussions, you've created a dangerous situation. Um, but that's kind of, I don't disagree with anything I said. And I don't quite understand why people disagree with me. Um, the only reason why I can think is because they truly think that Jews are making it unfair for people. And frankly, if, if you're if you're in that camp, you're just a loser, right? You're just you don't work hard, you know. You 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 don't you don't have the ability to navigate yourself in this world, because if you think that there's a a culture, a group of people out there that are stopping you, I mean, you gotta look at yourself in the mirror. You're probably not doing the right things, you know. You're probably blaming a lot of people for your own shit, even though it's you. So that's all I really want to say about that. The other thing I want to speak about, which is going to get a little dicey here for me, uh, which is okay, you know, I'm, I'll go out in the dark waters. That's fine. That's fun. It's fun out there, because I believe what I what I I the things I believe in, I believe in them pretty pretty aggressively, not aggressively, but I believe them believe in them pretty passionately. And I was listening to Matt Walsh. He came on the podcast yesterday with Joe Rogan, and Matt Walsh did a movie called um what is a woman and it is a i haven't seen it let me just be honest i haven't seen it so i can't really speak on the documentary but it seems like what he's doing is he is trying to get a simple he believes a simple question answered what is a woman and going into that there's already an issue because nowadays there's a there's a number of people out there who believe that a woman isn't just necessarily a human who has female reproductive organs, a vagina. And because of that, a question like who's what is a woman becomes complex. And should it be complex? Personally, I don't think so, right? Um but there are people out there who do believe that, and that's that's okay, right? That's okay. And he is going out there, and he's just asking people, what is a woman? And he's bringing, he's doing it to bring, like, the absurdity to the question. Okay, and I can kind of get down with that. I do think there might be, there might have been a little bit of a uh, overreach or a out, out outcry into that world of gender, you know, I do believe there's, there's a male and there's a female, and I do believe there's trans people, and I, you know, I believe in all that. I know trans people, and, you know, more power to them. That's awesome. You know, I, I've i said it. I've done I've done clips on it before. I couldn't imagine. And for me to sit here and say that it would be an easy decision to transition if I felt like I was born in the wrong, the wrong gender, That that seems like a a situation that I would never want to be put in. That seems extremely difficult 
for multiple reasons. If you're bored of man and you feel like you're a woman. I mean, 20 years ago, you were, I mean, good as useless. People didn't look at you. People didn't understand trans people. People didn't have time for them. And it, ha- it has to be terrifying. It has to be like what a, what a gay person goes through 50 years ago, 70 years ago. Um, so that's my stance. I, 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 I sympathize so much with people in the LGBTQIA plus community. I do. I, you know, I make jokes about it sometimes because jokes are fine. I don't see anything wrong with jokes, but at the end of the day, when I go to bed at night, I love everybody and I'm accepted. I accept everybody. <clears throat> And that was my issue with Matt Walsh is he did this trans thing. He, he did this talk, did this movie, which was fine because he wasn't harming anybody and he wasn't, it didn't seem like he was harming. It seemed like his intention was just to kind of for entertainment purposes and to get a real question answered. And I don't think asking questions is ever dangerous. I think people who don't want questions asked, those are the people that need to be, um, I think that's, I think someone who, refuses to answer a question or doesn't want a certain question asked, that is scary. That's trying to control speech. And I don't, I'm not for that, but asking a question is completely, that should be encouraged. But later in the podcast, you know, and this is something I've grappled with my entire life. You know, Rogan, we kind of got the, he kind of got into like the, the conversation about homosexuality and gay people. And it seemed like just, it seemed like they were talking a lot about gay men. And, you know, a little bit about me and my background. I was brought up in a Christian family, right? Um, I went to private school. I went to church. I went to Sunday school. I went to Bible school. I was confirmed. I was baptized. Um, I took the bread of Jesus, the blood of Christ, and I was brought up in that world. I was brought up in a world where homosexuality I was lucky enough that in my house, my parents were much more liberal in that sense, and they had no issues with that. But at church, it was a different story. Um, The purpose of marriage was to reproduce and to have kids. And Rogan really questioned him hard on that. And it 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 was interesting to listen to somebody try to defend their beliefs off the backs of faith. And part of me is understanding of him. And I understand what he's saying because that's the doctrine that he follows is religion. Just like a lot of doctrine that a lot of people follow are, um, our college or is education is science. And if you follow that doctrine, then it's a little bit different, but it's just, I think, I think my overall message from it was, he, Matt Walsh, is simply, I mean, he, it seemed like what he was saying was, um, if you can't, if you don't have the potential to have a family, to, to, to produce kids, then the point of marriage is, um, there's no reason for it. And that was difficult for me to hear. And that was sad for me to hear because I felt like we've kind of, I, and this is, I was wrong. I felt like we've kind of gotten over that a little bit. And maybe I'm just naive. I mean, I live in a pretty conservative area, and I would say that a lot of people around here maybe don't quite agree that, you know, gay marriage should be legal. But to hear another person talk about, and I think, I think, this, is the, I think this is what bothers me the most, and this is, this is with both sides of the political party, and, and this is what I think kind of keeps me up sometimes when I think about it is this um, this hypocrisy on both sides of the party where you have the left, you know, that is pro-choice. You know, they are pro, for the majority, pro-drug use. You know, a lot of Democratic-run cities and Democratic-run uh, um, states have much more lax drug use policies. Um, so their freedom and pro-choice and those things. But when it comes to other aspects, you know, pro gun, you know, pro guns, um, gun rights. And during COVID vaccine rights, 
it seemed like those original beliefs kind of got twisted up a little bit. And I think the argument is, well, guns kill people. And it's like, well, drugs also kill people. You know, and I think there's an overwhelming amount of overdoses in liberal-run cities. And that's not saying I disagree with that. I think we should have... I think drugs should be legal across the board. I mean, that's that's the, that's the stance I take on it because, and this sounds kind of dumb, but this is kind of how I look at it. And maybe I'm dumb, but murder is illegal. Like rape is illegal. Those things are illegal, but they happen. You know, just because you make something illegal doesn't mean that it won't happen. And it, it what what tends to happen is those people who are willing to make those crimes, willing to fulfill those crimes, murder and rape. They are not going into it like, hmm, if I attack that woman, you know, who's walking on the, you know, the, the bike path and I rape her, I wonder how long I'm going to go to jail for. Like, there's like an acceptance of punishment, but it doesn't really matter. And I think that's the same argument that can be made with like, you know, making abortion illegal. It's like, you're not going to stop it. It's the same, it's the same argument with like, making drugs illegal. Like the more strict we become on drugs, the, the higher like drugs are used in the country. Um, but that, that's what kind of upset me with like the left is, was a lot of their freedom things, beliefs. But then when it came to the vaccine, it was like, nah, like you don't get to work if you don't get the vaccine or like you can't go to the grocery store if you don't get the vaccine. And, and, like, the same thing for the right, you know? And I think I speak for, like, the majority, majority of Americans that you don't feel like you belong in a political party anymore, you know? You feel like the left has, you know, really left you in a lot of beliefs that you had, and you feel like the conservative party has very much taken on, like, a an extreme Christian Catholic feeling to it. Um, that's how I felt when they reversed Roe versus Wade. Um. But it's interesting because the, 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 uh, what happens with the right is they have a lot, you know, freedom, right? It's kind of their doctrine, the right to bear arms, um, you know. They take a very much of a uh, freedom, you know, let smaller government, let the people decide. and But it's not consistent. You know, freedom, I don't want to get the vaccine, but... You know, if you want to have an abortion, absolutely not. So I want to have autonomy of my body, but not all the time. And that's where I kind of get upset. And, you know, that's where I, that's where I kind of stand nowadays with, like, election day. Like, I just feel like a nomad in the world. You know, when you see some celebrities, like, people on, like, Instagram, like, certain comedians, I don't want to say names just in case, like, you know, they repost it and, like, trash me or, like, sue me. I know they wouldn't, but it's always a possibility, like, like you pull up, um, I'm gonna pull up this one uh, person's uh, social media page, and it's just complete like slander. Um, here you go. It says Republican vote tracker, and the caption is "Our rights are on the line tomorrow. Go out and vote." And this is what it says. It says Republican vote tracker 100% voted against cheaper gas. 100% voted against cheaper insulin. 100% voted against cheaper drug prices. 100% voted against child tax credits, stimulus checks, the Voting Rights Act, ending gerrymandering, fighting climate change, prosecuting rich tax cheats, saving Roe versus Wade, banning assault weapons, fighting domestic terrorism, keeping birth control legal, gun background checks, more baby formula, stopping domestic violence, veteran cancer care, same-sex marriage, and upholding the election. Well, the bottom, like, five were, like, less than 100%. But it's just stuff like that. Like, it's this idea that you can just take, like, a... You can just take an idea and you can say, like, one political party is not a fan of it. And the other political party is a fan of it. Um, I think what I think what ends up happening is you actually... You end up weakening your political side because people see through it. And I think that's what's going to happen this midterm. I think a lot of people are going into this midterm thinking that people who are um, Democrats and voted for Joe Biden are going to continue to vote for Joe Biden. That's just not true. Like, I can't guarantee what's going to happen, but I can almost guarantee what's going to happen. This is going to be a rude awakening for a lot of Democrats who wake up on 
Wednesday, and a lot of the people that they voted for did not win because people get fed up. You know, you can only push somebody so far until they get to the point where they just get angry. And I think that's what's happening. I think the red wave is coming. And do I necessarily want that? No, not really. But it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Another thing he also said that was really interesting. Um, I think it might have been Ben Shapiro. So Matt Washer's on Rogan, and then Lex Freeman had uh, Ben Shapiro on his podcast. And I don't really listen to Ben Shapiro that much. He's not really my kind of guy. Um, I used to listen to him more back in the day. I used to listen to a lot of like political people back in the day. I don't really listen to them too much anymore. Um, but he kind of lost me at the gay marriage thing too. I just I can't understand why somebody wouldn't want somebody get to, for somebody to get married. That just doesn't make sense to me. It, that, that, that doesn't make sense why there's people out there who don't think gay should people should be allowed to be married. And, like, the question is, like, okay, if you believe that the purpose of marriage is to reproduce and to have a child, are gay people just, like, why, why are gay people alive? Like, why did God create gay people? You know what I mean? Like, if the whole purpose of God creating humans is to reproduce more humans, then why would you put somebody in the world who doesn't have sex with the opposite gender? And, like, I don't think there's a response to that. I think maybe it's because I just, I don't even know. I can't even, like, I can't even, like, theorize on that. Like, I don't know why. And may, maybe the answer is because the whole purpose of being human is not to reproduce. Maybe there's, like, no purpose at all. Maybe it's just to find someone who you love. And if it's a man or if it's a woman, then that's who it is. And, like, who cares? I don't understand. Like, I take such a libertarian view. Like, I truly don't care. Like, I don't want the government to step into anything. I don't want the government to tell me who I can and can't marry. I don't want the government to tell me that a woman can't have an abortion. Like, I don't want to, I don't want the government to tell me like, like anything, what I can and can't put in my body. I don't want like objective things to be allowed in my body, not be allowed in my body. I don't want them to tell me that alcohol, I can buy alcohol on every corner street in the entire country at like 11 o'clock in the morning but I can't put marijuana in my body if I live in Oklahoma. I don't want, like, this big body to tell me what I can and can't do, ever. And that's what is so upsetting when you hear people who take the stance that, like, gay marriage is, like, wrong. I think everyone has a right to happiness. And the the value of marriage is you're showing the world like, hey man, look, we're dead serious. Like this is we mean this. Like this is what we want. This is who I love. Come celebrate love with me. And for somebody out there to say, to take a stance that those people, gay people, can't enjoy the same thing, I don't get down with that. I don't, I don't jive with that. Like that's upsetting. It really is. And I've been grappling with both of those things lately, like the gay marriage thing and. The Kanye West thing, like, the Kanye West thing was a bad. It was bad. I'm not even Jewish, and I could recognize how bad that is. It, it harkens back to, like, Nazi Germany, man. It does. As much as I don't want to say that, it, it just does. Like, after the war, like, after World War One, like, Hitler came into power because he was able to rally the nation around hatred towards one group. And say that one group is the cause of your suffering. Like that one group is the reason why you people don't have money anymore. It's the, why you, why do you guys all have to work, you know, eighty hour weeks and they make all the money. It's when you de. It's it's when you dehumanize a group of people. And then it becomes a lot easier. To do what you want with them and to turn Americans and Germans and people against them. And so when you have somebody who's like Kanye West going out there and doing just that, I just don't know how you don't see it. I don't know how people don't see it. I mean, some of the stuff, like, I, I'm going to pull up, pull up a few right here. Let's see if I can pull them up. Just like some of the uh, questions, some of the things that people said to me. Um, 
I think I put up the truth about Kanye West. Let me see if I can find just one here. So, okay. So this guy said, or he said harm, or is he just using free speech? You're young, so I don't blame you, but this is free speech. But if you don't like, you are not expected to listen. Take your time elsewhere. It's cool. I'm for freedom of speech. You know, like I'm totally, I get it. Like he's allowed to say that. I'm not saying he shouldn't say that. He can say whatever he wants. You can say whatever you want. That's that's the power of being a human. That's the power of being an American is you can say whatever you want. But for someone to sit there and say that it doesn't cause harm and it question the fact that words don't cause harm, that is ignorant. And to say that it's because I'm young and I don't understand, like that's also just wrong. Words cause harm. Words cause Holocaust. You know, words cause terrorist attacks. Words carry meaning. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be allowed to say them. But what I am saying is when you do say them, they do have an impact. They do have the ability to make people do dangerous acts. That's all. Like, that's all I was, you know, that's all I was saying. And, you know, maybe I shouldn't even give a response to that, but that's how I, that's how I feel, you know. Um, I guess another thing I want to talk about is Elon Musk buying Twitter. Um, I've been, I've been a fan of Elon since 2014, 2015. And, you know, he's always been somebody who, he has the ability to build very successful businesses. He doesn't really, um, he doesn't really like he's not he's usually not the founder of businesses. Um, he founded SpaceX, obviously, but like Tesla, he bought from somebody. Like somebody already built it, and he came in and just made it better. Um, but what he does is he has this ability to take something, a vision, and build it to be a powerhouse. You know, he did that with SpaceX. He, he's done that with Tesla. He's doing that with um, uh, what's the name? Oh, what's his Star uh, Starlink. He's um, he's doing that with uh, the boring company, and he's now going to do that with Twitter. And it is, I don't know if there's ever a debate for somebody having too much power. It's Elon. I mean, that man owns the biggest American car company in the world. He owns the biggest private space company in the world. He is the number one car seller in China right with Tesla he owns Starlink which I personally believe Starlink is the most powerful company he owns because it is internet and internet is godlike like internet gives you access to the world without internet you don't have connection to anything and you're seeing that right now in like Iran I think it's Iran let me just double check I don't want to be wrong on that <clears throat> Yeah, Iran. Yeah, internet is, it, it allows you to communicate with the outside world. Without internet, you have nothing. Like, so the ability for him to, like, send Starlinks to the Ukraine when the Ukraine war first started, um, I think it's still going on. I think, well, the war's still going on, but I think he's still sending things to the Ukraine. Um, and then now the ability for him to own the biggest platform in terms of speech is going to be very interesting. If I'm a Tesla stock owner, which I'm not, I own like QQQ and S and P, which owns a large amount of Tesla. I'd be like, Hey man, chill out, bro. Like how much time can you spend between you are, you're already stretching us with like owning SpaceX and Starlink. We're already scared about you owning uh, Tesla as well. But it's going to be interesting, you know, and the fact that he did this right before the midterms is, I don't think that was a um, coincidence. I think he was trying to get it early before the midterms because he was not a fan when they blocked the uh, the uh, the laptop story, the New York Times story. And he is somebody who's a freedom of speech act uh, um, absolutist. So he thinks that there should be no limit on freedom of speech. 
and I personally am in that same category as well. Um, with that being said, sometimes things like what Connie said are said, and I completely and wholeheartedly disagree with them. I think they're very dangerous, and I don't think a man should ever say those things. But to deny that people won't say those things is absurd as well. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what he does with Twitter. Uh, I, I don't use Twitter anymore. I'm completely off of it. I don't use social media really that much anymore at all. It's just kind of a choice that I made. It's not really for me. Um, I use Instagram, uh, TikTok, and YouTube shorts just for like, obviously for like my podcast. But outside of that, I'm not I'm not really using it as much as uh, I used to. But I'm all for it. I think Elon, I think it's good that Elon bought it. It's funny seeing people saying like, "Oh, like I'm gonna be off of it soon." It's like those are the same people who said like they're gonna move to, you know, Canada <laughs> when Donald Trump won. And like, nah, y'all, you guys stay right here, in in, in the greatest country in the world, America. Um, but yeah, I guess that's really it. I don't really have much I want to talk about today. Um, I just want to drop in real quick and give you guys an episode. Uh, next week we'll be back on full time scheduling, forty five minute episodes. Every single week. This week has been stressful for me personally. Like seeing my family was beautiful. Um, but right when we came back, Taylor and I, basically, while we were gone, we have decided that we're going to be moving from Roanoke back to D.C., closer to D.C., which is closer to where we did live. Not in the same area, but it's closer to the same area. And I've had a few opportunities. Some of my friends just went out of the way and they're helping me look for a job in D.C., which is very exciting. Um but her and I, we've collectively agreed that that's kind of where we want to live. So between now and March, <laughs> we're going to be moving. Um, but with that being said, I've had to do a few interviews. I feel like I'm getting closer and closer to a job. I had a really good interview on Monday. I don't want to jinx myself, um, but it went really well. And it's a decent paying job. It's a remote job. Um, and it's there's pay increases each, each year. There's, you know, all the benefits, health dental, medical, or, you know, dental, vision, medical, 401k. It's, it's, a, it's a real job. It's a real big boy job. It's kind of like in the life science pharmaceutical industry. So we'll see. You know, I'm looking forward to hearing back from them. And if that can go through, then that's going to make less stress for me, less stress for Taylor. I haven't been, I've been stressed as hell lately. Like I've been trying, you know, some days I convince myself that I'm not stressed, but then I feel it. Um, I'm stressed, you know, like it's, it's hard looking for a job. Um, especially when you want to move, you know, it can be difficult. Um, and then when you do have like a really good interview, like I had one company I did two interviews with and they both went really well. And I, I feel like I should have got the job. And what's really frustrating for me, and this might just be me being, you know, selfish or like being a narcissist, but I feel like I should be working at those companies. Like, I truly think I'm the best employee a company can have. So, like, when the interview doesn't go well, it's just kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of heartbreaking. You just, you kind of go, like, was it me? Was it something I said? It's like a breakup or, like, a relationship. Was it something I said? Or, like, a first date. Like, why why, why don't they want to go on a second date with me? And you kind of get caught in your head. You're like, Mate, was I too honest? Did I say the wrong thing? You're like, I don't know. But it is what it is, you know. Something's going to come. Uh, hopefully by the, hopefully the next time I talk on the podcast, I have a job. Hopefully basically what they said is that they're going to let me know by the end of the week and then training starts in three weeks, uh, the week after Thanksgiving. So who knows, man, who knows what the future holds for me. Um, but I do know Taylor and I, when we went back home, we kind of missed being closer to family and we missed, you know, Roanoke is a fine place. It's a cool city, but it's just not it. It doesn't have, there's a, there's a cap on your potential. And that's kind of something that I, I don't want to be in. She doesn't want to be in either. And, you know, as we, as we get older and I, I I met one of my, I've not met, but I hooked up with one of my friends again and we talked and a big moment happened for him and a big moment happened for me. And I want to be closer to people that I love and being out here four hours is not that far, but it's far enough. You know, it takes up a third of a day just to drive, you know, there and back. So, Whenever you are in town, you just feel like you're catching up. How's work? How's school? Like, you know, crap like that. But it's never like a sit down and 
have a conversation with people and, you know, really connect with people. So that's, you know, we're, you know, so <laughs> that's the process, man. And I'm going to record a lot of that for my vlog. Um, but that's just, I just kind of want to give everybody update on that side of my life. That's where Taylor and I are at right now. Um, so it is stressful, but it is, that's life, man. You know, like I'm, I don't regret this decision ever. Not once I'm happy. Like I'm happy we moved out here. I learned a lot. <laughs> um, we took a lot of chances and I think they paid off and we learned a lot about ourselves and how to be independent and how to live on our own and how to, you know, pay our own bills and like how to manage money, how to grocery shop, just stuff like that, that, you know, doesn't seem that important, but like it is important, you know? Um, but yeah, guys, that's all I really want to talk about. I want to, uh, probably, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. Um, like I said, the new podcast or the new video, uh, the road back episode three is going to be uploaded on Friday. Um, and then I'll probably most likely see you guys again next week and I'll sit down and talk to you. Hopefully by that time I have an answer about like my job interview and all that. So I can just let you know about that. You know, I'll be a little bit more upbeat. Just every time I have an interview the week after, it's just like hell. And like when I schedule an interview, like the, the days leading up to the interview and then the weeks after the interview, you're kind of just, you feel like you're in a little bit of water. Like you're just holding your breath. And like, I don't know about you, but like that feeling of holding your breath is not fun. I don't, I don't like that feeling. I would rather not have that feeling. I'd rather just know I got something and know I didn't get something. But as they say, that's life. And this is, this is, this is what you got. Also, I cut my hair. I don't know if you can see that. Got my, got a haircut. Got rid of all my long hair. It's a big change. Big change. Having a midlife crisis, quarter life crisis, as Taylor Tomlinson says. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. Check out the Roadback episode. I'll see you guys next week. Peace out.